All right, time to get this party started, I guess. So tonight we're going to do a uh, teardown of this beautiful piece of gear here, the Fluke 1910A Multi-Counter. I think we'll start out with um, taking a look at some of the specs on it here. <clears throat> so operating range is 5 to 125 megahertz. megahertz. <laughs> Uh, period from 5 hertz to 2 megahertz and totalize up to 1 million counts. Now, the time base is 10 megahertz. It doesn't have either of the temperature controlled crystal oscillator options. It's just got the standard option in there. So that's all it's got. What is really cool is Fluke gives you a 111 page manual with this thing, and it's pretty cool. But we'll get into that a little bit later because we're going to do a teardown. So let's get this thing open and see what's up. These old pieces of gear are really nice because they open with just uh, one screw. Can you guys hear me? Somebody uh, post a message or something and tell me if the audio and video are right. This is the first time I've ever done a live stream, so I don't know that everything's working okay. So we got the screw out. All we got to do now is give it a little eh. There we go. And she pops open just like that. All right. Thank you, Carl. I appreciate that. Oh, hey. Hey, these these are popping up on my on on my phone. I can see that. Great. Okay, so now we're inside. I wonder, can I zoom in with this? No, apparently I can't. Can I do it this way? No, apparently I can't. So we'll have to do the old-fashioned I guess we'll call it sneaker zoom, right? <laughs> All right, so we're inside here now, and um, this this particular multi counter came out somewhere around the late seventies, I believe. I mean, you can tell by that that plastic coating and that beautiful front end there. All right, hello to Scotland. And one of the cool features here is if you look at this right here. These two big black boxes are D-cell battery holders, which I think is uh, pretty doggone cool. You could take this thing in the field with you with your handle. It even came with a, uh, a hard case or a soft carry case. It had like a shoulder strap that you could put on and just, just carry this thing around like a, like a giant nerd purse, I guess you would call it. All right, so you can't see much going on here. Like I said, we've got the two D-cell battery cases here and here. And we've got a uh, our, our transformer here. And this is um, for the batteries to transform it so that it can power the board. Take a look at these old school capacitors, axial caps. And this is a really neat feature of this. Okay, the display board wraps all the way around here. And it's this really thin, flexible plastic. It's got all the ICs on it. And then it goes clear up to the front where the seven segment displays are connected. Now the real magic is of course hiding under this shroud. And you can see right here, there's a spot to put a screwdriver in with an adjuster. So let's take off this shield and see if we can look underneath and see what's up. Wow, 15 people watching. I gotta tell you what, I'm impressed. I told myself when I scheduled this, if I got five people watching, I'd be happy. So I'm very happy. Thank all you guys for coming. I appreciate it. Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, wherever you are. Okay, so now we've got the lid off of this, and I'm going to bring my light over here 
so we can get in with some more light. And let's take a look at this. This, this is the actual counting board here. And if we take a look, let's uh, rotate it around like this. And we'll go over what some of these ICs are. Now, this one here, that's got the little cap on it that looks, you know, kind of funky. Looks kind of like an EEPROM. This is a custom IC. It's got three features built into it. It has a uh, broadband amplifier, um, a dual Schmidt trigger. Pardon the sounds. I'm doing this live stream from my phone, so the emails are still dinging. And then another post amplifier. So that's a, that's a Fluke custom chip right there. Okay, next to it, we have a type JK flip-flop. That's one of your two types of flip-flops. There's the D-type and the JK. Down here, we have another JK flip-flop. And then over here, we have just some Jelly Bean Logic. These are some 74 chips. There's some NOR gates and some AND gates and some NAND gates. Now, this guy here with the lightning bolt on him, this is a P-channel MOSFET array. And this one here is an N-channel MOSFET array. We'll take a look at that paperwork here in a minute and, and check out exactly what they do. Now, the only other IC we can see is down here on the board, and that is a display driver. Now, being from the late um, 70s, actually, let's look in a... Okay, I don't know how well you guys can see that. Let me see if I can get some more light on there. Can you guys read that? There's a date code on there. 8335. So 35th week of 1983 is when this particular unit was produced, but it was originally designed in 1977 according to the documentation. Everything is through hole. And, uh, yes, Chad Hartsky, I know you're a Batman fan. This is my 3D printed Batman ring. Maybe if I bring it up closer, you, uh, I just don't think there's enough light. Let me try and get a little more light in here. Bear with me, guys, because this is my, uh, my first ever live stream. There. I hope you guys can see that now. But that's the display driver UA759 or 74922PC. Everything else you're going to see. No, no. Carl, 33, 30, 8335. The 35th week of 1983 is when that was made. That's the way those date codes work. Let's see if any of these other chips have date codes on them. I don't see any other date codes. But if you guys see that chip right there, that is the NE555, which is the most widely produced chip in the history of ICs. Now here, on this side right here, is a uh, thin film transistor, or not transistor, resistor array. So over here is where the prescaler board would go if that option was on here. And this, this is strictly the base model. There are no options installed. And for those of you guys who haven't followed and, and know where any of this stuff came from, um, the college where I teach gets rid of equipment about once a year. We have a salvage department. Anything they determine is not economical to fix they have a big auction. And I bid on a pallet of gear, uh, $99.99, and I wanted about 20 pieces of test gear. Some of it worked, well, so far everything that I've got, I've been able to get working. Um, so there's, there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming up in the future.
I, I just get a kick out of this the, these battery holders here. They got these little shrink wraps on them now, but you just pull that up, shove your 4D batteries in there, and take this bad boy with you wherever you're going. All right, so let's put a. I'll tell you what, let's go into this diagram here of how this thing actually works, which is kind of cool. So our signal comes in and it goes to the input section which they have very thoughtfully broken out for us right here. So the input is coupled through this capacitor and it goes to a buffer. And if you remember me showing you that special chip down here, oh, hold on, I missed the one. Just got to work in Japan, so I can't stay to watch. Wanted to drop in and show my support. Okay, Jonathan Wells. Thank you very much, Jonathan. All right, anyway, that's that special trip. Broadband amp, Schmidt trigger, and an output amp. So you can see the signal is coupled here. It goes through the buffer, and then it goes through this special chip. Chip, I can't talk again. We have our uh, trigger level adjust, which is this knob right here. It has an automatic section, and you'll hear it click. Now I can adjust my trigger level. And then we have our attenuation. And that's this, where's the attenuator at? Right here. That drops the signal level by a factor of about 10 to 1. And once there, it goes to the main gate, once it passes through our input section. So you can see here we have, we just looked at the input section. If we had the prescaler, it would go through the prescaler, but we don't have it. So then it goes to the main gate, through the high-speed divider, and into the accumulator, which sends things through auto-ranging and then to the controller, balances it against the time base, and also through the display. I mean, Fluke has just given us a ton, a, just, just a ton of information, 111 pages. You don't find that in gear today. It's just amazing. All right, so let's, let's put her clothes back on. I'll put the screw in later. Let's see if we can sit her up here. Don't worry, I'm, I'm going to move the camera. Hang on, I'm going to move the camera, guys. I'm sorry for it shaking and everything. Like I said, this is my first live stream. All right, what do we need now? Now we need, uh, we need some power. Let me find... Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me just put it up here. Give me one second again. I'm sorry. I know I'm unorganized, but uh, if we do any more live streams, I promise I'll be much more organized. Yeah, it just slides in, and then there's a screw in the back that buttons everything up, but I, I didn't put the screw in. I'll do it later when you, I'm not wasting you guys' time. Okay, let's see. Can we get it to focus? All right. So this is a function generator. This is another piece of gear I got from the same auction. And it's uh, up to a 3 megahertz. Hi, George. So let me hook up a BNC cable. Did you guys see uh, Dave Jones is looking for guest videos for January? I, I applied. Hopefully he'll pick me. All right, so we are set here at 190 hertz. I'm going to put this in auto ranging mode, frequency, reset. Now I just turned this on, so it hasn't had time to warm up. The temperature so it might be a little off who's Dave Jones EEV blog 
All right, so we're getting 190 on here. We're getting 1.9. We're getting, we're getting about the same thing there. Um, hey, John. I've gone through about half the gear so far. Everything has been, um, other than this function generator, everything has been a little bit off. Um, I'm going to swing the camera around again here for a second and show you guys something else you might get a kick out of. If you're one of my Patreon patrons, you already know about this. This is the CNC Universal Counter I got from that auction also, and it was marked dead. So I thought, this will make a great, uh, great repair video. So I made it for my monthly patron video, and uh, it wasn't dead at all. In fact, I've turned it on here. You can see it works quite well. There is a switch on the back to switch from the internal to the external counter. And if it's on the external counter with no external counter connected, then it won't power up. And I flicked that switch and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Now, I've been at the college for five years and I've never seen that piece of gear. I've never seen any of these. These are old, these predate me. Like this thing is about 1994 vintage. We just found out this one was manufactured in 83. That universal counter is from about 2000. So I'm guessing, you know, 10 years or so ago, some student flicked that switch. Nobody knew what to do, so they junked the gear. Lucky me. All right, so you can see this guy here has auto ranging mode. We're at uh, 190 hertz here. We'll go up a decade. There's a uh, 1.87 kilohertz. You can see the little kilohertz LEDs lit over here. I dig these old school red LED displays. But 1.8K, one, 1 and we're seeing 4.7 here. Let's see what happens after a reset. 4.8, okay, how about I turn the attenuator off? Huh. Anybody got any thoughts on that? It was uh, behaving better earlier. I'll tell you what, here's what we'll do. I'm going to flick on the oscilloscope. And we'll hook the B and C up to the scope here. Yeah, it might need some calibration, all right. All right, I'm going to hook this up to the scope. And let's see what we get here. Whoops, sorry, bumped the camera. Well, I'm not getting anything. Do, do, do. What's going on here? Here, let me turn the camera around so you guys can see the scope. Okay, my output is on, I'm giving it a sine wave. Oh, you know what, Paul? You're a dumbass. You hooked it up to the trigger input. Or, yeah. Hello. Sometimes. Okay, so this is reading 3.2 kilohertz. Okay, now we're down to 1.87, which is what the function generator is showing. All right, let's hook it back up. To here. Wow, I, I don't get it. This thing seemed to have been working okay. Uh, could it be the range? Let's go up to a 10K. So there's 20K. Now that's more like it. Twenty two point two. How much did you pay for function generator? I paid a hundred dollars for an entire pallet that had twenty pieces of test gear. So I paid five dollars for everything. 
Now, okay, you know what? Let's switch function generators because this counter here is separate from the function generator. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to bring in a digital function generator so we know exactly where we're at. Yeah, I, I got a great deal. Even if, even if half of it doesn't work, it's still a phenomenal deal. All right, let's come up a little bit higher. Hey, Michael, yes, a great deal. Okay, so we got a 10K sine wave at 10 volts peak to peak coming out of there. Let's see what we get. Nothing. Okay, again, with the dumbass move, duh. Please, please pardon me. No, there's an upgraded version of the 8008. I had not heard about that. But I tell you, I believe I am all maxed out on multimeters for a while. Okay, so we're hooked up. Now I know that's a solid 10K. Let's see, 12. Maybe if I change the trigger level. For a while, George, for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm not getting it. Let's change the waveform to a square wave, see if that makes any difference. Okay, it definitely likes the square wave. So there's a square wave at 10K. You know, it shouldn't have mattered because... Um, let's jump back down here. If we look here... at the diagram of the input section. That uh, three position chip there, broadband amp, Schmidt trigger, output amp, that should square up any wave that goes into it. So I don't know exactly what's going on there. Okay, but there's a square wave at 10K. Let's, uh, let's bump it up to 100K. That's pretty good. 100 point. Oh, oh, oh. Let's take it up to 500K. Nice. Hey, while we're playing here, if you guys have any questions or suggestions for me, throw them out. I'm going to turn this up to a megahertz. This thing's good, I think, to 150. Okay, so now we got the one megahertz dot lit. There's one megahertz. We go two. Could I bring back the soldering kits? Yeah, I just don't have any right now. I pretty much did them all. I'll get some more. Three. Four. Let's max it out. There's six megahertz. Ooh, why is this so blurry? You know what I did, Michael? I, I changed to a um, a square wave. It liked the square wave. There we go, now we're more solid. It liked the square wave, even though it really shouldn't. Let me hit this point here again once more for Michael since he missed it. On the input buffer section, that chip here has a broadband amplifier and a Schmidt trigger. That Schmidt trigger should square up any sine wave. Okay, let's go back and let's let's uh six megahertz square wave. 
let's go back to a sine wave. All right, there's a six megahertz sine wave. Let's go frequency four. Okay. Six megahertz is as high as I can go, George. I don't have anything that uh, goes up any higher. Although I, I could whip something up. I'm not going to do it tonight. But I will whip something up, and we'll look at this again in the future. All right, so down to one megahertz, and one megahertz looks good. All right, let's take it down to uh, 1K. I'll put it in auto. Yeah, see, we're showing 1K on the digital and 72 down here. You meant at 6 megahertz. Oh, I, I did that, didn't I? Here, I'll go back up. Yes, it does like it. No, Brenda, that's absolutely fine. That's that's why I'm here. Ask anything you want. Okay, there's there's six megahertz sine wave. Six megahertz. I can change the uh, I can change the wave. There's six megahertz square wave. Six megahertz triangle wave. There's six megahertz ramp. It's probably not gonna like that too much. But let's uh let's see if we figure out what the hell's going on at the lower frequencies. I mean I gotta be missing something, right? Let's go 10k. Auto reset. Okay. All right, now we're seeing now we're seeing 10k. Are we? No, we're not. Because that's in kilohertz, and it's showing me point zero one. What we got going on here? This thing is confusing, isn't it? <laughs> I put it in auto, and it's showing me 10. Huh, very interesting. No, John, it is not liking the lower frequencies at all, which may be uh, the reason that they scrapped it, for all I know. Hmm. Very interesting. Let's let's go back and... Um, If we look here, going down. Okay. Um, it should be good from 5 hertz to 125 megahertz. Then again, you know what? I mean, I just plugged it in. This is an older piece of gear. So maybe, maybe it just needed to sit for a considerable period of time but it is showing us 10 here let's take it down there's eight and yeah I doubt it would be with the ICs Carl it, it if there if there's some sort of problem with an IC it's generally either dead they either work or they don't work um, chances are it's old capacitors that are leaky or something along those lines. I just don't know. All right, do you guys have any, uh, if you don't let it auto range, okay. Poor switch contacts could be, but it's, it's, it's okay for the higher frequencies. All right, there's manual. Um, it's in the 10 times zero mode, and you can see we are at a 8K. But if I had a BNC splitter, I'm going to have to order one. We'd be a lot better off. All right, who's good at math? Raise your hand. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? 
All right, let's try this. John, sometimes Carl. All right, here we go. We're going to do an experiment. 10 kilohertz. All right, 10 kilohertz. So 10,000. What's the reciprocal of 10,000? 1 over 10,000. Because that will be the period of this wave. All right, John, let's see what we got. Ninety-nine point nine milliseconds. <laughs> Which is close enough to point zero 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 one. John, you get a gold star. So the period is is working okay. Now the other function that we have here. Oh, you know what? This has got an internal self check. We'll do that next. Um, the other function we have here is what's called a totalizer. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this down to something nice and slow, like say uh, 2 hertz. So that we're at 2 hertz right now. And you can see the overflows on here because it doesn't know how to handle 2 hertz. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit the totalizer. Watch this. When it hits 99999, it should overflow. But anyway, what the totalizer does is it ignores the trigger level and just counts the pulses. So basically, it's just a, uh, it's a pulse counter. Back to 2 hertz. Oh, that's right. It said it didn't like anything lower than 5 hertz. Okay, there's 10 hertz. What do you got for me, machine? I'll even put you in auto range. Yeah, I think uh, I think this 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 bad boy's got problems. That's indeed. So I'll give you guys a quick tour of the rest of the gear on the I've got sitting up here on the bench so far. You've seen this function generator, the GWS Instec. 8219A. Yes, I'll play with it some more. I just don't want to bore you guys with me poking around inside of this thing all night. Th what's neat about this uh, function generator is you can see it has sweep and it also has modulation. You guys understand what modulation is? AM and FM? Would you like to see it? I can do a quick demo for you here. I'm, a, I'm just switching these cables around. Bear with me for a second. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. You know, when I first started this, somebody asked me, how come I don't just tape my classes? Because I'm not allowed. I asked. And they're like, absolutely not. What do you think we pay you for? We're not giving this stuff away. I'm like, assholes. Brenda, you're absolutely right. Okay. Let me move some stuff out of the way here. And we're going to go over. That was you, Jason? Yep. Good to see you. Actually, I don't see you, but good to see that you're here. Okay. I could tape myself teaching, but I actually like my job. I mean, it's pretty easy. <laughs> um, I basically really only work one day a week. I have a I have lecture on Monday. I'm, I'm not working at all right now. We're on Christmas break. I have lecture on Monday, then we have recitation on Tuesday, which that's what teaching assistants are for. Wednesday we do lab, Thursday we do another recitation in lab, and Friday I have office hours, so 
it works out pretty well. All right, so here we are. We have a sine wave, uh, 1.877 kilohertz. Bring up our measurement window here, and you can see all the goodness going on there. 1.876 kilohertz, there's our period, which is the uh, reciprocal. Our duty cycle, 51%, and we are at 21 volts peak to peak. I'm going to turn that down. Oh, you know what? That might have been what was messing with that old function generator. Somebody remind me, and we'll check that out. Okay, so modulation. First, um, we'll do amplitude modulation. Ready? Modulation on. So if you notice here, the amplitude of the waves is changing. The voltages is changing, and that's how AM radio works. Now if we switch, we can go to FM modulation, which is frequency modulation. Now the waves are getting bigger and smaller. All right, modulation off. Now we also have sweep, where we can go through frequencies not the same as frequency modulation this is a linear sweep we can also do a logarithmic sweep which is much larger we'll turn the sweep off yeah let's go back over to the fluke and I'm going to try that with a lower output voltage, even though it says it should be good up to like 200 volts. You just never know. Okay, 1.87 kilohertz. I'm getting 8 point... That said 8.7, didn't it? Like just the one was missing. I'm going to turn off the attenuation here. Auto mode frequency. We'll reset it. Nine, four. That could be pretty close. Watch this. I'm going to turn up the amplitude. Yeah, see that? That's made a big difference. Try this. Let's turn on 20 decibels of attenuation here. And see what we get. Yeah, you're right. It did make it a whole, a whole decimal point off. Huh. Well, that obviously was not the problem. Because it doesn't seem to be making any difference whatsoever. I don't know. I'll play with it sometime. All right, guys. Any last questions? No? All right. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming and joining me tonight. And thank you for viewing my videos and subscribing. And you guys are the greatest. Could you do a video of a triangle wave generator? Yes. Oh, yes. How about the self-check? Thank you, George. All right. So for the self-check, if I remember the instructions correctly, nothing is hooked up. Trigger is locked into preset mode. Resolution auto. Check button. Uh, Frank, I did a video on the NRF24L01 about six months or so ago. I will look for a link and I'll, uh, I'll post it. Okay, so that is correct showing 10,000 auto mode. 10 megahertz. Thousand. Okay, that's not right. We should be getting a multiple of 10 in each one of these. Yeah. Way out. Way out. Thank you for reminding me, George. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Peace. I love you all. Thank you for uh, allowing me to do this and for allowing me to continue to do it. You guys mean a lot. That's it. Good night.